But surprisingly, if you can believe it, the quiet truck series. This wasn't the only <laughs> story out of the truck series. You would think that disqualification would lead the headlines. But there was also an issue during the race between Johnny Sauter and uh, Austin Hill, which was fascinating and entertaining, to say the least. Outside, outside, still there. Clear, 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 clear one, clear one. How the f He just spun it and wrecked it. That's what happens when you try to stuff my stupid mother Yeah, we're done with this guy. Inside, inside, inside. He's chasing you, he's chasing you. Stand in it, stand in it. Hang on to it, hang on to it. Hang on to it. He's wrecked out of us. He's just destroying us right now. You're fine right here. Your truck's not that bad. You're fine. You can go ahead and put it on the trailer. I'm fine. Don't talk to me. I will whip his ass when I see him later, though. He's got one coming. He'll never change. Let's just stay focused and finish this thing off. We'll worry about him later. What does he expect when he tries to put me in the fence going into one? I'm not putting up with that I don't blame you. I support you. They're going to want to see you at the trailer. I know you guys are listening to me on the channel, and I know you don't like that NASCAR. But that's the second week in a row that guy's wrecked us. You need to watch the video. Well, if you couldn't connect all the dots with all the beeping on the radio, <laughs> basically what happened is um, Austin Hill had a little contact by Johnny Sarda going to turn one. He thought it was too much, too frustrated, whatever the situation was. I think we would all agree he went in and wrecked Johnny Sarda, got him in the left rear corner up the hill. Johnny Sarda went. Then Johnny Sauter under yellow, which I think is an important clarification in this, runs Austin Hill down, wrecks him. They park Johnny Sarda. I don't, I'm confident this is not the end of this situation. So, Jeff, what does it look like moving forward from here? I don't know. I think NASCAR is in a tough spot right here, and here's, here's why. I think if you look at points, if the playoff started today, and let's just say you go back, you find uh, Johnny Sauter 25 points, which is what they find Jeff Gordon when he and Clint Boyer got in that deal. It's zero penalty. It means nothing whatsoever. So, I don't know how NASCAR handles this. They're going to want to penalize Johnny Sauter, uh, they're not going to want to penalize him too big, right? They don't, you know, they don't want to do that, I don't think. But at the same time, if you're going to penalize, it has to mean something. So I, it's going to be interesting to watch what NASCAR decides to do. Uh, do you do you find them X amount of points, no matter what the situation, no matter where they are on points or whatever, or do you find them uh, penalize them rather based on the situation they're in? I, I, I think it's going to be interesting to watch to see what happens. Well, we saw the playoff standings. The reason that 25 points would mean nothing is because Johnny Sauter has a win, so he's in the playoffs. We saw Matt Kenseth retaliate with Joe Logano. Matt Kenseth missed races. We saw Kyle Busch wreck um, Ron Hornaday at Texas under yellow. Kyle Busch was forced to set out races. What should happen to Johnny Sauter? Oh, gosh. Yeah, th this is such a debate all the time. And, you know, well, as race drivers, I mean, you're, you're in a heated situation and you're battling hard and you don't always make the decisions that when you look back that you wish you would have made at, at the time. Uh, it, and Johnny Sauter is a champion. Uh, he's a good race driver. He's a hard race driver. And, you know, I think we've all been put in the situation that we felt like that we were done wrong. You know, I felt like that the first contact was something that was incidental um, and, and if Austin Hill had gone down in and run into the back of Johnny Sauter and not wrecked him, I, I think this probably would have kind of sorted itself out. But he did wreck him. Uh, but then what Johnny Sauter, once we start using our cars or trucks then uh, to retaliate, then it becomes uh, a much worse situation. And NASCAR has to do something, but to what level? I agree with Jeff. This is a tough call. And, and making this happen in the world of playoffs now, where a win and you're in and taking away points. And, you know, the trucks, as we know, that, you know, their fines can't be the same as what they are in the Cup Series because the money uh, differential there. Yeah, and these are discussions that NASCAR is going to have tomorrow when they do their weekly post-race analysis with all the competition officials. They'll sit down, they'll figure something out. We might know something by late tomorrow afternoon on what further punishment could await Johnny Sauter. I'll say two things. One would be uh, there wasn't really any precedent established before the last time something this significant was weighed by NASCAR. That was in 2015 when Matt Kenseth wrecked Joey Logano out of lead at Martinsville. Kenseth got parked two races, uh, was, was made to sit out for two weeks, and there really hadn't been a precedent established prior to that for, for that kind of punishment. So that was interesting. And then I'll say the other thing, the, the example you bring up, Stevie, about Hornaday and Kyle Busch at Texas, Kyle Busch's penalty in that instance was he sat out the remainder of the weekend. He sat out the Xfinity and the Cup race at Texas. He was allowed to return the following week. If you talk to some NASCAR officials now, there, I think there was some remorse about did we sit him for too long and have him sit for two races in other series? Maybe it should only have been one race. Yeah, so 
So I felt like when Matt Kenseth got penalized, I thought that was too severe. And here's why. Exactly what you said. There had never been an, an example of that that was that severe. And NASCAR at that time, and I think mainly Brian France, decided this is a different situation. You took a guy that was in the playoffs and, and with a chance to win a championship, and you, you took him out with a wrecked race car. So does that change this conversation? And I think they, but then I go back and I think about the Clint Boyer, uh, uh, Jeff Gordon situation. It was the same thing. Clint Boyer was second in points. He had a, still had a chance to win the championship, although an outside chance. Jeff Gordon took him out, and he was only fined 25 points. Right. So this ball has <laughs> moved. And, and this, this decision that they make on what they're going to do with Johnny Sauter isn't going to just impact the truck series. It's going to impact every series. Oh, yeah. Because yes. it's going to set an yes. example of what you can and cannot do as a driver. And I think that's why it's so difficult. So for me, this is where it no longer becomes racing. When two people wreck for position, no matter how blatant the situation is, I don't feel that should ever be refereed. Two guys on the racetrack, that's between driver and driver. That has nothing to do with any of us. And DJ, if you don't like what Jeff did, that's between you and Jeff, you need to go work it out. As a crew chief, that's what I always supported. When it starts to happen by cars that are multiple laps down, like Matt Kenseth, or even more importantly, when it starts to happen under yellow, that is unacceptable. There are safety cars on the racetrack. There are safety trucks on the racetrack. I mean, whether it's three seconds into the yellow or 30 seconds into the yellow, when the track goes under a yellow flag condition from a guy that used to jump over pit wall, that's no good, right? Like, you, you, that has got to become. So I think the severity for Johnny Sauter has to be swift. I would like to see a suspension or the loss of playoff points, but nothing that removes him with an opportunity to race for a championship. Now, he should feel it. So the suspension maybe will take an opportunity to win playoff points. Maybe you take away some playoff points. But you can't kill a guy's year. And I think that's what's going to happen if they lose, you know, if he's not eligible for a championship. We'll see what they do. Um, but either way, one sleepy truck race in Iowa. I mean, we've had a lot of, I mean, we, we had a whole segment between a disqualified winner and, and a wreck under yellow. We've had a lot to talk about. You know, a lesson, a lesson for every race car driver in this, in my opinion, is all this started the week before. Yeah, they yeah. were still mad at each other yeah, about what it, right? happened, Something right? Happened. Yes. Yeah, right, and it, right, right. it only took that much to, 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 you know, to spark the fire. So, you know, people laugh. You know, Kale didn't used to text Donnie. Well, you know what? If you need to text somebody just to, to clear the air, even if you agree to say, you know what? What you just said, I completely disagree with. You need to communicate. Yes. Because you're going to race each other. You're going to get together. That's what racing is. And you better find a way to communicate. And I heard, you know, Austin Hill, I heard him in an interview say, he, you know, he, he kind of tried to have a conversation with Sauter or looked at him, and Sauter, you know, he felt like kind of just said, don't want to, you know, I, I don't know. Well, I wasn't be there, I didn't see it. Should it. Be. But, right. but you better find a way, right? right? right. I mean, right. You, exactly I mean right. you and I have yeah. had tussles, yes. and you, you've got to find a way to have that conversation because I promise you, you are if, if you and I get together yeah. Saturday night, we're going to find each other next week too. That's it's just right. always how yeah. A great out. example is Logano and Kenseth, right? Because yes. Kenseth was primarily upset with Logano because he never got any sort of contact. Not even an apology I think he was looking for, Jeff, but after Logano was spun, or spun Kenseth out of the lead at Kansas, he never heard back. From him after yeah. that, yeah. and I think if Logano even wanted to say, "Hey, I know you're mad, but too bad, I was going for the win," that that might have kept Kenseth from wrecking him at Martinsville. Hey, motorsports fans! Thanks for watching. Make sure you hit subscribe before you go for all the latest news and highlights across motorsports.